Good morning, Denise Dryden here. I'm a little bit late because I had to go find the perfect spot to talk about this today. And of course, it ends up being right in front of my favorite tree, this grandfather uh, cedar here on the island of Bainbridge. So I'm here in Bainbridge, it's August, and I want to talk about the concept of to hear, how to really hear. And I thought about this topic after doing um, that last week's video on deep self-care, because when we really do deep self-care, we start to notice things on a, on a much different, more profound level. So for today, I thought we would play a little bit with the concept of hearing. What is it really like to hear? So it makes sense to me that what we hear is what we need to hear and what we want to hear. So I'm going to start with the physical. You know, to hear requires that we allow ourselves to listen, that we actually tune in with our ears and start to listen. And I know that sounds oversimplified, yet it requires that we allow all of ourselves to listen. Not just sort of like, you know, I'm going to do this and one ear is going to be over here, but to tune in with both ears and to be physically present and to listen. So to hear, we need to turn down the volume of what's around us, right? <laughs> that sounds really easy, but screens, noise, cell phones, distractions, music, anything that's out there around us that's getting in the way. Number two, take our headsets off and let go of controlling what we hear. So, um, I spent some time yesterday walking around in Seattle and I noticed that everyone has their earbuds in and I started to wear them too because it meant people would stop talking to me on the street. I would just keep like, if I saw someone I didn't want to talk to, I just like pretended like I was into the music. So taking off our headsets and letting go of controlling what we hear. Um, the third one, uh, lean in, pay attention to the sounds around you. Don't just listen, but sort of lean in and like, what am I really hearing here? Um, uh, pay attention to the way nature talks to us, the way it wakes us up in the morning, the way it settles down at night, the way that the birds get really loud at certain times and then they get quiet. Um, the ways that a city wakes up. I love listening to a city. It's very quiet. And then you start to hear the rumbling of the cars or the buses or the trash cans or the, the conversations down on the street. Get used to the rhythm of your house the creaks that it makes, the sounds in your apartment building, the stirrings, the sounds of the elevator, or whatever it is, get used to what that rhythm is. Um, the lull of the conversations around you. Um, one of my favorite things is riding the ferry and just sort of listening to conversations and laughter burst out in different spots. And the people around you, listen to the people around you. So when we hear, we're using our physiology of our ears, right, the physical part, um, and we're also using our psychology, which is like, what am I really hearing? Did I think I heard that or heard that? And so we're starting to sort of process, what does that mean to me? So it's like putting the two of them together, the physiology and the psychology of, of listening. And they're different and they are, um, they both come from the inside. Like I have to actually pay attention, I need to know what's going on. So one level of hearing involves another. Or others it means that you know like I if I'm gonna hear somebody talking I have to actually pay attention to that person so when we give our attention to another to a sound or an action we have conversations or we have exchanges of sentiments observations um, opinions ideas thoughts feelings all of this is what happens when we have a conversation with somebody right when we actually interact with another so it's interaction and it's designed with a purpose it's collaborative it's a give and take and this is an important part of socialization it's when we're learning a language that we learn how to exchange with one another language isn't I say this one way and you, you either nod or you just are quiet it's it's I say something you say something I say something you say something and so that's the first level of listening and hearing when it is when it involves another person or others. So I was on the ferry yesterday and I met this lovely man who had just moved to the island with his wife and his children were grown. And we just started chatting and we ended up sitting next to each other. And for the entire 35 minute ferry ride, he talked nonstop about his job, about his family, about what it was like to live on the island. And I know that I'm a very good listener and I noticed, oh, 
I'm just listening and and I stopped even asking questions because the stop the, the conversation never stopped. So it was a nice man, well traveled, educated, but just one way. One way information. And this isn't a conversation, right? It's it's outer directed and there's no listening involved with him. And so I'm not picking on him, I'm just using him as an example. If we are only talking, then we're not, it's only one way. We're not in that collaborative give and take, right? So what? how common is this really? I mean, how often does this happen to have a listener and a talker? Or how common is it to have a collaborative exchange? It's really fun to watch good conversationalists in conversation. They laugh, they giggle, they talk back and forth, they share information. So in a previous um, video, I talked about the Crystal Kids, the Millennials, the ones that are vibration oriented. And I've been watching and they're really good at the give and take of conversation. They share, they add things to it, and they sort of move around the circle. There might be two of them, there might be three, there might be six of them, and they just sort of move the conversation around. And I also noticed that the older we get, through the generations, whether it's Gen X or baby boomers or the the, the silent generation, the, the, the real elders at this point, is that um, they, they are less, either they are less oriented towards conversation or they have less skills. And so I did, a, I did some research and found a study that said there's only 2% of us on the planet that have, you know, real formal education on listening. And I thought this is a good topic for us to talk about today is how do we hear? How do we really listen? So the next level above just involving others and uh, another and others involves you, others, and the environment in a partnership. So it's you, others, and the environment. So this is, this is moving from actual um, sound and exchange between two people to the space in between to paying attention to when there's a pause, what the eyes look like, what the smile looks like, what the environment does to support that. So it's ways that we adapt to the unspoken exchange, which makes sense, right? And for those of us who are energetically sensitive, we feel that space and that energy around the words. Those energetic signatures sort of jump out and they have stories and they have opinions and they have perspectives and they have wounds and they have all of that involved. So when you're energetically sensitive, sensitivity, uh, high sensitivity, empathic skills, then you're really picking up on what speaks the loudest to you. So we're reading the environment, the person, and listening to the whole body. We're leaning in, or even sometimes we're just trying desperately to keep breathing and push back because we can hear everything. It actually goes beyond the space of words and expands into all of the present that we pay attention to. All of it. Every bit of it. It's just right there in your face. <laughs> so Rumi calls this partnering with the divine. It's when you can, you can, you can hear with your body. You can hear with your um, ears. You can hear with your eyes. You can hear with everything. And for those of you who are wide open and listening to the world, it can feel a little bit like channeling, right? It's like there's information when we're truly open to reading it. There's lots of information there. The way sounds show up when you have a certain feeling, like a bell ring or a horn honk or a confirmation or a settling of the house. I have this, this picture that when I'm deep in thought and I'm like, is that what I'm thinking about? It does this little settling sound. And I, when I pay attention to that, I'm like, oh man, if I really hear this, then I can be in partnership with the house. The ways that nature responds to us, the wind picks up, where there's um, a big aha or an eagle will fly in front of me. And so I've lived in the land of eagles for, ah, shoot, probably 25 years, right? And in both Montana and Washington, eagles are all over the place. But I notice that when I have a profound sort of breakthrough and I'm having a conversation or I'm thinking something and I go to write it down, an eagle goes right across in front of me and I think, okay, so that's a good, that's a good confirmation. So partnership um, of playfulness, putting together the cause and effect of words and emotions and attentiveness and openness and what shows up on that spot. So that's another way of listening. So how are you at hearing? How are you at really hearing what's around you, what's within you, right? 
What does it really take? And as part of this video each week, I offer a set of tools and skills. And so here are some ideas that I have of how to, to really address the concept of hearing, to really hear. So hearing and listening, number one, is a choice. We get to actually make that choice. We get to stop ourselves and go, am I listening? Am I really hearing this other person? Or am I paying attention? And I get to choose what I'm going to do when I interact with the world around me. So number one, it's a choice. So you can catch yourself when you're not hearing. You can remove the distractions that, that prevent you from hearing or that make it hard for you to hear. You can turn off your phone or put your phone away in another room. You can turn off any music or screens and sort of make the house a little bit quieter, the office a little bit quieter. You can notice how it feels in your body with silence. Sometimes silence is creepy. It's just like, uh, too much. Uh, there's too much going on in here. And sometimes it's so restoring. Find out what does silence mean to you? What do you notice, okay? So start simple. When you're not paying attention to hearing, stop and take a walk. Like for instance, one of the things I coach is go down and touch the mailbox. If the mailbox isn't far enough, go down to the end of the street, touch the stop sign and come back. But break the pattern and get out and do something. Really do something that, that allows you to sort of put it behind you and get outside and listen. And then get away from what's comfortable and choose something else and then pay attention. Tool number two, when you're with another, ask a question. Ask a question and then give yourself time to listen, whether that's a minute, three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. You know, ask a question and let there be silence. I notice with, especially with adolescent boys, the more questions we ask, yeah, we sort of pummel them, question, question, question. They just shut down and they don't even talk. If you say, what was your best part of your day today? And then you don't say anything else after that and you just let the silence be there, pretty soon they start sharing. It's, it's allowing the silence to open up that other person and let them feel the space and notice what they do. So lean in and listen fully, absolutely fully, paying attention to their voice, their eyes, their body, their posture. Listen to all of it. Are they conscious or are they unconscious of you? Like this guy on the ferry. <laughs> they, do they understand your connection? Match your questions your next question, your response, with what they're saying. If it's soft, talk soft. If it's excited, talk excited. So this is another way of sort of continually building the conversation. Number three, go outside in nature. It's a natural cleanser of overwhelm and it's a beautiful way to get in touch with yourself and listen. So, you know, sit outside, follow a bird or a squirrel or the clouds or in my case, I've got the, the Puget Sound right in front of me. So I get to just watch which way is the current going? What's the, what's the sort of um, personality of the water right now? Okay, so feel things on your body. Can you feel the air? What sounds do you notice? Is it quiet? Is it, is it, is it, how, is, are there sounds out in the background? Or is it really quiet inside? Okay, and is that silence good for you? And can you feel the subtleties of the shift inside your body? So the fourth one is to listen to the inside. What does it take for your inner dialogue to start talking to you? What does that sound like? What does it feel like? Is there pain first? Is there anger? Is there criticalness? Why? You know, is there happy playfulness? Is there peacefulness? Get used to sort of going inside and going, I'm listening. What do you have to tell me? What is it that you have to tell me? And what's, it, what, what's going on? And then pay attention to what drops in. So in 2010, I moved to Whitefish, Montana. And I moved to Whitefish because I was having a lot of intuitive bleed throughs in the middle of my work. And I wasn't sure what was going on and I needed to go someplace where it was really quiet, where I could figure this out. And so I started to get, you know, take long, long walks out on the mountain roads, out on the lakes, and sort of pay attention to what I was hearing, what images were coming into my head. And I learned how to hear on a much deeper, broader level and learn how to partner this with tarot cards. So it's like I would ask questions and I would take what I was noticing with the cards and then start to build them together. So I was hearing things about myself and the world on such a different, deeper level. So now I have this vehicle. So when I really want to hear what I have to say, what I really want to notice what's going on, 
is that I can sit down and I can be um, connected and collaborative. So in order to hear, remember that it's number one, it's physiological. You have to actually tune in with your ears and your body. Number two, it's psychological. It means that you have to sort of engage your brain and your body in what am I feeling? What am I noticing? What am I doing when I'm listening, what I'm hearing? And I'm gonna add that third one, which is it's metaphysical, which is there's profound information to you when you kind of allow all of that interconnectedness to show up. So to hear is, is complex, it's beautiful, it's a, it's a superpower, and it's a way of reading and interacting with the world. And this is the kind of stuff I work with. So if this is appealing to you and you wanna learn more about that, just let me know. Drop me a note, drop me a message through Facebook, get on my website at denisedrydencoaching.com and let's talk. Have a wonderful Sunday, it's the middle of August. Get, um, we have a couple weeks of still playing before summer is over. So get out there and take a walk and see what you hear. Take care.